Welcome to my floss tube. This is the Windy and Neverland channel, talking about cross stitch mostly, a few other things. I am coming to you outside because it is a beautiful day and because today is November 13th, 2019, and it is Kindness Day. And a lot of people are doing um, the hashtag Cardigan Day um, in honor of the Kindness Day and associating that with Mr. Rogers and everything. So I am wearing my cardigan, or the closest thing I have really to a cardigan. Um, so between it being just a beautiful day and having to wear this sweater, I would be a little too warm inside wearing it. So I'm kind of getting the boast of both worlds here. I get to be outside and I get to participate in the kindness day for the cardigan. Uh, you may hear a little bit more noise coming from the road today, traffic going by, because one block that way, there's a road that runs. So the road right here runs north to south, but the road one block that way that runs east to west is the main road through town. And I've got, you know, we live in a really small town. Um, they have it partially blocked off because they're doing road work on it. So the detour comes right past my house. <laughs> but as you're gonna see, even though it's a detour, it's such a small town, we usually don't get a ton of traffic. We're gonna get enough, but hopefully not a ton. Um, my hair is a little bit wet. <laughs> I don't know how um, nice it really looks, but whenever I wash it, it takes forever to dry and I usually let it dry on its own I don't use a hair dryer um, I just kind of let it do its own thing for the most part so um, because it does take so long it's still gonna look a little wet <laughs> sorry about that alrighty let's jump into some stuff so glad you're here by the way um, I have been working on a few new things a few old things but I haven't really bought, purchased things. So it's gonna be a little different video today. I don't have a video to show you of something that I went off and did for my own personal, personal life, like I've done with the gardens and my yard and stuff. It's all going to be pretty much related to stitchy stuff in some form or another. So the first thing that I'm going to show you <clears throat> is that if you watch Pretty Southern, um, Linda Jo. She uh, does do some floss tubes, but for the most part, it seems like she does uh, Instagram videos, stories. So in one of those that she did fairly recently, she had done this, the booklet pouch. So she was talking about who did it, where you can get it. So I loved it. I thought it was beautiful and great and all the fabulousness. Um, so I went and got the pattern, which is what this is, and proceeded to make one. My, um, paper clip is getting stuck on something else. All right. So when she did hers, she made a comment that if I ever do another one of these, I might tweak it and do something a little different by adding handles. Um, I can't remember. She said she might do something else that would be different. So looking at what it is you can see it's pretty it's it's a pretty thick thing it's like three inches so and it's really really stiff there's a really really stiff stabilizer in here so yeah grabbing it it might slip through your hands a little bit easier so i thought you know what that handle idea was a really really good idea so here is mine loveliness and yes i did i added added handles to it so it is very easy to carry around and mess with. Um, the inside fabric, I went off the colors of the flowers for the most part, if you're kind of wondering how I chose my colors. Um, the separating zipper, sometimes you just kind of have to mess around with it when it gets to the end. So let me show you. I've got a project in there right now. but. Got some of these beautiful orange and yellows and pinks and then really pink soft fabric as well. And you know that it does have four little compartments. This is the larger size, which comes to their measurements say nine by 11 by three. 
Um, this is great for really small projects. So as you can see, it's just I've just got a small one in here for this one. I also have another one in here for this one. Um, for really small ones, I know Linda Jo doesn't, she stitches in hand a lot of times too, so she can fold up her fabric. So you can fold up your fabric and put, you know, a, a decent size. Because these ones I have in there, I mean, they're literally really small. They're not very big um, projects. And they only require a couple of threads. They don't require a ton. But you can. I saw she fit a lot in hers. So this size does fit a lot. Um, I may consider making one that's bigger than this. Uh, I just don't know yet because I got some other stuff going on so I haven't really given it a lot of thought. Um, but yeah, this beautiful. I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so some of the, I'll go ahead and get into my whips before we talk about some other stuff. I started a new one. Let me get my picture out for you. This is from magazine. I copied it so that it was easier to um, take around with me instead of having the whole magazine. <clears throat> Here we go. Ornament Trio. Very pretty, delicate. I love the colors. I love the beautiful scroll work for the hangers. And it doesn't, I mean, it kind of shows up a little bit in the picture, but it also has um, Krynik in it in the ornaments and you also so it's I think there's gonna be straight crinic in some of the stitching but there's also some blends so you blend you got a blending filament with the one of the colors um, so I will show you what I've done so far that is this one and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the really light blue has some of that blending filament in it so it does have some oh I'm going to pause you for a minute here and grab some stuff that fell down. That's that's the downside of being outside. <laughs> if there's even a slight breeze, some of your stuff just kind of goes. So yeah, I'm getting there. That's the one. That's the blue one on the far side. And then um, you've got the two different green shades. So we'll get to that eventually. It's a nice thing to start because it's, you know, people are starting to think about Christmas right now. So let me pause you for a minute. Okay, I'm back. Got my stuff out from the stuff that kind of flew down into the yard. <laughs> All right, the next thing I'm going to show you. Now, I showed you this kind of last time, which I'm going to kind of show you again this time. Because part of it, apparently you get the button free, the way that they had worded it. The button was free as long as you bought the pattern. So it was the fall Yule All. So I'm covering up the pattern that's behind here. Um, it came with an adorable little button that you put on. So it has um, a U sheet, <laughs> for lack of a better way to say that. Um, so that's stitched on there, and then there's a bunch of pumpkins at the bottom that you stitch, and then you add this to it. <clears throat> it's by Shepherd's Bush. It's very cute. So I'll show you mine and then I'll talk about it. It's very, very cute. I love it to death. But here's, here's the hiccups that I found in this. For one thing, it tells you to use color 302. If you're going to use DMC, it gives you both the weeks and the DMC. And that, because it was such a small little piece, um, I just thought I would use DMC. I'm not going to worry about getting that for the most part. There is no such thing as 302. It's a misprint. So something was wrong. Um, the weeks is grapevine. So at least you have some color um, to go by. It, I mean, you could pick your own colors too. That's not a problem. Um... So the instructions tell you to use, and you can see I just used, um, it's an Ada, nice little coloring to it, um, kind of neutral. It tells you to use 18 count natural linen, which this is an 18 count, but it's, it's a, um, an Ada. It tells you to stitch over two threads. 
It's 18 counts. So if you stitch over two threads, you're going to have really big X's. I did not want really big X's. I don't like that look so much. So, I mean, you think about it, it's basically a nine count by the time you're, when you're done stitching. I didn't really want that. So I thought, well, I'll use 18 count, but I'll just go over one thread. Problem solved. Not so much. Not so much. Because when you stitch it, I mean, it's adorable, and I love the way that it turned out. But when you stitch it on that, and you stitch it so that um, you want to add the button, not so much. You can see how much bigger this button is in comparison. I mean, it's half the size of the sheep, crying out loud. So it doesn't really work. I can't. That's why I didn't put this in. I stitched a pumpkin instead. Um, I think, yeah, I stitched this little guy. This is normally where it would be. He's got little spots on him. So I kind of matched the little spots on here a little bit. Um, but yeah, it just is not working real well with the button. So I will keep the pattern. And if I decide to ever stitch it so that I can add this button, I will probably have to modify it so that it's, you still have the smaller X's, it's just bigger, you know, you know what I mean. So that is something I'm going to have to work towards and figure out another time. For now, I have one done. Good enough for me. <laughs> All right. The other thing that I will show you, if I can find my little pattern here that I've been working on, and again, I did pick it up and work on it, uh, is my little Hade Little. Ha <laughs> ha! Big Hade. <laughs> it's the Treasure Hunt bookshelf one. Uh, I will insert a video here of where I started from, from the last video. So, if you remember, or if you could tell, I was around this urn. That's kind of where I started. I'm kind of going along the top part of this bookshelf here. Just the part that sits against the bookshelf. So, again, it's still on my scroll frame because I don't want to take it off. It's too big. It's so much of a pain on this particular frame. Um, so, I'm just going to have to show it to you while it's on the frame. So, I got past the urn, the urn's over here, got more of her dress done, moving over here. So, I mean, as you all know, whip uh, hades are slow because there's so much confetti most of the time that it just, you just can't get a ton done. Um, her dress was a little easier because it didn't switch colors so much, so I pounded that out pretty good. Um, so at the point I'm at now, it's mostly um, more books and foliage. That's the point I have gotten to right now. Um, we're going to be getting to this unicorn, so I'm kind of around here. So we will be getting to this unicorn or horse or whatever it is. It might just be a horse. I can't tell if there's a horn or not. Um, so yeah. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, it's going. I think so far, just for this month, I have somewhere between 12 and 1300 stitches into it. Um, so, it's it's. If you were following the um, full full coverage fanatics challenge where you were doing 100 stitches every single day, then. Yes, I'm pretty much on track for that. I'm just not doing it every single day. I usually tend to get closer to the 200 mark in when I do stitch it. Um, somewhere between 150 and 200. Sometimes I go over 200. Um, so it kind of all balances out so that I'm getting about that much. I would like to do more. If I stitched on it every single day and I stitched that much, then yes, I would far exceed the 100 every day. But I just, there's some days where you just don't feel like working on it. 
or things come up and you get busy and you just don't have time to do it. So, you know, you kind of got both. <laughs> uh, one other thing I did start, very cute little guy. I was in, Joann's had a sale on their DMC floss. So I was stocking up on some things for some projects. Uh, so while I was standing there trying to find one with floss, I just happened to look over at their little kits. I mean, there's nothing special with the fabric. It's just DMC, but it was so cute. So cute. Isn't he adorable? So cute. And I didn't need to use my coupon for anything else. And nothing else was coming up that I was going to need to use the coupon. So I used it for this. And it ended up being like 3 or $4. I don't Not very much. I've gotten a lot done on it. In fact, I'm pretty close to being finished. I just have a couple little things left. So here he is. She. Here she is. Her little garland and her little flower in her hair. So stinking cute. Yes. And this, because it's a kit, and if you've seen these kits, you know this, it comes with everything. So it's got the little tassels. It's got the little dowel so that you can put it up to hang it. So you put some of the tassels here, some here if you want, and hang it. And it's just so cute. It just makes me smile. It makes me feel good. So I'm probably going to end up putting it in my stitchy room in my sewing room, like actual sewing machine sewing room, not that I do my cross stitch up there. Um, and that way I can look at it all the time. So I still have the little blanket that sits over the top of him, then attach the tassels and, you know, basically the finishing parts. So I'm really close to finishing this. This did not take very long because it's not a very big project. So a lot of brown, stitch a lot of brown. That's okay. That's okay. Um, it's it's just nice and fun to do those kind of things every once in a while. Um, I think I'm going to pause you one more time because there's one other fun thing that wasn't stitchy related that I wanted to talk about and I'm going to go get it so I can show it to you. Okay, so my hubby <laughs> is not a creative person by any means so not creative um but his job he's a project manager for it group where he works and so occasionally they have um you know where they go out and do group um bonding activities <laughs> can't think of how they phrase that uh so sometimes it's his job to come up with the activity that they're going to do sometimes it's somebody else's and i think this time it was somebody else's <laughs> Because this is not something that he would pick to do. So they went to a ceramic place. And what I mean by ceramic is not where you paint the thing and leave it there for them to kill. Um, and then you can pick it up later. This is where you actually make the pottery. You make things. So they made two things. One was on the wheel and one was done in hand. Um, I don't know if they would have done all the things on the wheel or if this was always the plan. Uh, they ended up having a lot of people in a really tiny studio, so it just didn't work out for them to do more than one thing on the wheel. So I'll show you what he did on the wheel first to see basically that he is capable of doing this and making something that looks fairly decent. It's a cute little bowl. I don't know how he decided what colors to to make these because he is partially colorblind. So um, the greens, reds, browns, all that, they blend in. Um, purple colors look blue to him because it's got the red in it. So I'm not entirely sure if he got help or if he just like, oh, I'll just pick something. But yeah, it does have a funky little bottom thing here to it. I don't know if everybody's did, but it's pretty nice. It's a pretty decent little bowl. So they also, as I mentioned, did a one um, by hand <laughs> where they just molded their item. And I saw somebody else's um, that was really pretty cool. 
uh, so they could kind of make it anyway. I mean, it's still a dish per se, but you could make it, I guess, in any shape really you wanted to. Um, so here's the other one. <laughs> it's a little wonky. I don't know what he was trying to go for. As you can see, these ends are very square and these ends are very round. <laughs> Um, it's a little wobbly along the edges, um, very different heights. <laughs> it's pretty thick compared to the bowl. The bowl is not, especially at the top, the bowl is not this thick. I don't know what he was planning to try to make it look like. I will still use it. I think it's still cute. Um, it will probably go up in my sewing room as well so I can, uh, store things in it. Um, but yeah he tried <laughs> he tried just uh didn't quite work out as well all right so some of the other things that i wanted to talk to you about and what's going on is i and sorry i'm gonna put this stuff down here i have mentioned before that i make project bags um a lot of the times at uh, the retreats Acorns and Threads has done for probably the last um, two full weekends and then there was one that was a one day thing. I have made project bags for them um, to sell at their thing. And they've been a big hit. They've sold a lot of them there, which I am so appreciative of that I have that outlet to be able to take them somewhere to be able to sell. Uh, I have, I had one video a long time ago probably in the spring, where I was showing bags that I had made and I sold them off of the channel that I was doing with Stephanie um, and did sell some there. I put, I did create an Etsy account to sell bags, um, grime guards, needle minders, all that stuff. And it hasn't been doing as well. And I know that with Etsy, there's so many factors involved. So, um, more traffic <laughs> not that it hasn't been going by but that's dump trucks a little louder so with the Etsy stuff not only are there a lot of sellers and there's several, a lot that are doing bags and whatnot different things like that so you've got that where they have to find you but now Etsy also has it so that you have to um, have free shipping in order for your store to pop up as one of the first stores for them to look at so there's a few different things going on like that. Um, so I am going to change how I'm selling stuff virtually like this instead of versus being at a retreat or a store or something like that. I am going to have a um, Instagram account. So it won't be this one. It will be another one that will have all this stuff on it. Basically like Etsy did, I'll have all my stuff and I'll update it as people buy things or whatnot. Um, so real quick, I'll give you kind of a little preview. Here's some ideas. This is not all of them by any means. And I do lots of different sizes. So I've got like 14 by 14, 12 by 12. This little one's I think a, nine, a seven by nine. Um, I have gram guards, needle minders, a variety of different kinds. I'm working on obviously more bags and, and grime guards and but also different um, materials to make needle minders. So I've got that in the works that's kind of been keeping me busy as well. Um, so between all of the stuff that's going on with trying to sell on Etsy, I also, I pick the name I picked for Etsy was the same name I use for this type of account though the Windy and Neverland. But when I sell my bags, I have a little tag on there that says bags by Windy. <laughs> so if somebody were to buy my bags, they don't necessarily know to look for Windy and Neverland on Etsy. So that was another factor of one of the reasons I was changing. So I have created an Instagram account that is bags underscore by underscore Windy. Because you know with Instagram, everything has to run together. And I don't care for running all the words together as much. Um, 
I could, but it just seems like you can read the whole thing a little better. I just hope everybody remembers to put the underscores in between and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I will have those on there. Hopefully by the time I get this video uploaded and published, there'll at least be some things. Uh, hopefully you'll keep coming back and checking things or subscribe to that um, account and that way when new things are posted you they'll pop up on your feed um, but yeah you can go directly to that account and see all the stuff there um, in case you missed a posting or you want to go back and look at a posting um, because you forgot what I had on there so hopefully this will turn out well this will be a little bit better for me selling online and stuff um, I will if I get somebody who wants to buy something of course you'll need to like um, private message me um, comment saying me you know if you put me please you probably will have to do, tell what size a bag you want because there might be several sizes listed um, so make sure you're including that um, obviously I can contact you if you don't um, but yeah, I will send an invoice through PayPal to pay. That's the way I'll do it. Um, but yeah, it's hopefully it will go well and we'll, we'll see. We'll see how things turn out. With that and this lovely, beautiful day, Oregon finally had rain yesterday. That was the first rain we've had in November. So you remember back when I said the rain was here and it started to rain and it was gonna rain all week and yuck. Well, last time I said that the weather lied to me. Boy, did it ever. Boy, did it ever. It's been like two weeks of no rain until yesterday when we finally got some. So, <laughs> we still have some more beautiful days coming, I think. Um, it was nice getting that little bit of rain so my grass doesn't die. Um, but yeah, with that, I think I will say thank you thank you thank you for all of you who have subscribed um, if you haven't already please do so that way we can have more people enjoying all the fun um, but yeah thank you for everybody who has subscribed already and those who will and hopefully you're having a wonderful day whether it's sunny cloudy you know rainy whatever enjoy it what whatever it is and remember to um, be kind to one another, especially today is remembering that. So anyway, that I'll send you off. See you next time.